Hello everyone and welcome to Guadec. Um, sorry I couldn't make it to Denver this year. It's complicated, uh, but I hope you will enjoy uh, the rest of your Guadec and I hope you have enjoyed the first day of Guadec. Um, I am here to talk to you about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I started contributing to GNOME as a language bindings developer back in 2000 and I don't even remember when, 2004 probably, 2003. And it allowed me to contribute to the rest of the platform uh, starting from that particular aspect. And I uh, deeply care about using GNOME uh, in different languages other than C, which is the one that I'm currently most comfortable with. So let's start with uh, talking about GeoJ introspection and the changes that happened and will happen in the future for this project. So this presentation is about the changes in the project, what those changes mean to library maintainers. Um, Philip Whitnell has a presentation tomorrow regarding the move of libgi repository into glib and what that means to consumers of glib, to language binding developers, as well as downstream distributors. So make sure you don't miss that one. Simple dictionary definition of introspection so that we are all on the same page. Introspection is a fairly well-established concept in object-oriented programming. Of course, since GNOME has its own flavor of object orientation, it also needs its own flavor of introspection. Whenever we talk about the GNOME application development platform, we constantly remind people that they can write their application in a variety of languages, not just C. It is an important feature of our project that we cater to many other communities and that we provide an environment that does not force you to learn a language as well as a platform at the very same time. Of course, it would be easier if we only supported a single language, just like we have a single toolkit, single theme, a single set of design principles. But at the end of the day, GNOME unfortunately does not have the kind of pull to get everyone to switch to Rust for everything, cool as that might be. In order to consume our stack in different programming languages, we need to settle on a shared format that is capable of accurately describing not only a CABI that the stack provides, but also the semantics of types and functions. An important side note, GeoJ introspection is not a description of a CAPI. It does not describe what the header file of a library contains. In many cases, it doesn't even describe what a source file contains. It is not something that takes C code, turns it into XML, and then from XML generates other C code. It's not an interface definition language. GeoJ introspection defines a CABI, the symbol and identifiers that can be used to find functions inside a shared library and wrap native values into data that can be passed at runtime across the foreign function interface boundary. You have to understand what a CABI is if you want to play this game. The introspection data comes in two variants, an XML document and a binary format. The XML document is expansive and is generally used for generating code or documentation. The binary format instead is more efficient, but the conversion from XML is lossy, so it's really useful for bindings to dynamic languages. The important part is that both the GR and the TypeLib data are platform and architecture dependent. They can only be used on the same platform and architecture that generated them. GR files can be architecture independent, but there's no real guarantee for that. The maintainer of the library needs to know whether it applies or not. For people writing GR parsers, there is a relax ng schema in the GObject introspection repository, so make sure you use it. The GTK binding community has existed just as long as GTK. Everything started off with handwritten wrappers that called into native functions. 
given enough time, programmers will try to program them themselves out of any issue. So we got progressively more int intricate code generators and tools that parse C declarations to generate structured data that could be turned into static bindings. Since we did not have a decent way to describe the semantics of the C ABI, every binding had its own way of overriding the code generator using some variant of C code that would be compiled alongside the rest. Each library would have its own separate binding maintained as a separate project, and every language binding would have its own interpretation of the semantics of each library. Instead of having a bestiary of formats and a veritable cornucopia of small modules, we now have a shared data format that describes not just an ABI, but also the semantics of the ABI. And for good measure, the data is built by the library that provides the ABI, so we only need to build it once. Of course, there are downsides. Introspection is generally hard to introduce after the fact and onto an existing unsuspecting code base especially one as complex as the whole GNOME application development stack. The initial decision was to use an iterative approach in order to try out the various annotations, their syntax, and their default behavior without requiring a flag day to turn it on or a massive coordinated ABI break to fix all the issues it found. This meant codifying the existing practices and behaviors of various libraries and slowly incentivize the maintainers to replace bits that did not conform. To be fair, this was the most reasonable approach at the time. It allowed gradual implementation of the introspection facilities while leaving space for a day where every library followed the established well practices of the project. Of course, no plan survives contact with the enemy. It turns out that documentation is the ever-present gotcha for all free and open source software, and introspection is not an exception. Everybody was on board for the first part of the roadmap, but nobody took the second part, the part where every library would end up with an enforced conformity, seriously, or plan for it. This initial decision mandated a very low friction approach. Rely on heuristics a lot for everything. Emit warnings only on demand. Error out only in the most dire situations. Since programmers are lazy, incredibly so, this has created a lot of bad incentives, like disabling introspection by default, or making it silent, or just ignoring all output coming from the introspection tooling. This has to change. This will change. The time has finally come for the second part of the plan. For that, we will have three easy to follow steps based on a stereotypically British scale. The first step is based on improving the existing warning infrastructure, following the trajectory of existing C compilers and their diagnostic messages. After all, if C programmers have been able to cope with the warnings coming from CLang and GCC with every toolchain update, they can also deal with an increase in warnings coming from the introspection tools. Ideally, we should have a proper repository of errors and examples of bad patterns and how to fix them, because apparently that's how grown-ups do things these days. The second step requires some help from the maintainers and possibly the build system. Ideally, maintainers should already enable fatal compiler warnings when running a CI pipeline, so enabling them for the introspection scanner should not be a major change. Additionally, Meson could do that for us automatically, just like it can pass the appropriate compiler warning when using its own error option. Step three is where the escalation in enforcement should become self-evident. Strict mode was added in 2022 to handle the case of colliding properties, signals, and virtual functions, something that made the Vala programming language very, very sad. Strict mode is still opt-in, but for those who want to increase the level of strictness, it will soon expose much more. For instance, it will emit notices for heuristics and default values. It will also add more cases where the API, while perfectly valid for C, may introduce invalid or non-idiomatic constructs in well-known language bindings. For instance, enumeration fields starting with a number after tokenizations, or collisions across interface methods. These notices can be collected into a report at the end of the build, and maintainers will be able to use them when changing their API, or planning to do so.
we talked about heuristics and defaults used to introduce the introspection to the existing GNOME stack. But what are those? They are generally documented on the GeoBJ introspection website, but not everyone is aware of them, which means things seem to work until they don't, and then people don't understand how to fix them when the CI pipelines are screaming at you. Uh, for the couriers, yes, this is from the same thread that gave you Is Linux About Choice? Ownership transfer is probably the most important part of the introspection data. Without it, we either get leaks or we get crashes. Because the C-type system, such as it is, does not tell you anything about the lifetime of a type or the semantics of moving pointers around. It's all just memory addresses. The default, by and large, is no ownership transfer of pointers, unless it's a constructor, in which case it's either a full transfer or a floating one in case you're using G initially unowned, which you should just not do. Automatic full ownership for out arguments is reserved for Kali allocated one for obvious reasons. All G pointer types are nullable by default, otherwise nullability is strictly manual. Similarly, all arrays have the element type of their argument and are zero terminated unless otherwise specified. Callbacks have proven to be really hard to understand. I fell into the trap myself multiple times until I decided to spelunk into the introspection scanner code base to verify. All annotations for a callback go on the callback argument. Scope defines the scope of the closure. Closure points to the argument that contains the user data passed to the callback. And destroy points to the argument with the notification function for the notified scope. The only place where you should use a closure annotation with no argument is on the user data parameter of the callback's type def. Constructors must end with or contain the token new in the symbol name. Otherwise, they need a constructor annotation. GRR arguments are removed from the list of parameters, and the callable is marked as throws. GSync ready callback and gcancelable arguments are automatically nullable unless they are marked as out. The XML variant of the introspection data contains all the documentation associated to each symbol or identifier, as best as it could be collected. Each doc block is paired to a declaration, so any doc block for a private symbol will be ignored. Some additional annotations are used to generate the appropriate links or blurbs in the documentation generators, like the property accessors or the signal limiter or the function to call at the end of a GSync ready callback. Deprecation and stability tags are also consumed by documentation generators. Finally, attributes are freeform key value pairs that can be useful to extend the grammar of the introspection data without necessarily adding more annotations. They are implementation defined. C programmers have the tendency to expose a bunch of API entry points using macros because when you don't have templates or generic types at the language level, everything looks like text substitution. This stuff does not exist at the API, le API level, so forget about it. Provide actual types and functions for everybody else. You can expose inline functions, but again, those are not in the ABI, so you should always have a fallback ready. The introspection data will include static inlines, as long as you provide a declaration, not just a definition, but those are used only for documentation purposes. Finally, stop using glist, gslist, garray, gptarray, gbytearray, and ghtable at the API boundary. Those are for implementations only, and you should never expose them to users. These are a bunch of changes that happen in the last cycle and this one. Uh, we include static inline symbols in the introspection data. We include the asynchronous function, the synchronous variant, and the finish function inside both the JIR data and the type lib binary. Vfunc and callback fields detect the doc block that are associated with them, so there is always a fallback. In this cycle for GNOME 47, we are going to validate enum members. We support G type pointer types, and we support 
integer size top level types like dev t, time t, of t, and so on and so forth. We also have a few planet changes for this cycle and the next ones. Uh, we are trying to split the test suite to, into its own repository so that language bindings can simply include it as a sub project or as a Git module instead of looking up the files installed by GeoBJ introspection. Another thing that I want to do, but it's very complicated to achieve, is stop compiling a small tool to extract information from the G-type system using the internal introspection API. It's very complicated, it's terrible, and it also requires building and compiling and running a small C utility when generating the introspection data, which is terrible for cross compilation. And finally, we want more warnings and a better strict mode, as I outlined earlier. So to recap, introspection is going to get louder. So people need to start taking it very seriously. Do not rely on heuristics and defaults unless you understand them. And write documentation like your users depend on it because they do and in more languages than you can expect. These are a few links, the GeoBJ introspection repository, which contains links to everywhere else, the, G the GeoBJ introspection website, and the GI repository API on docs.gtk.org. Thank you for listening to me rambling about, about GeoBJ introspection, and I hope you will have an enjoyable rest of your product. And feel free to ask me in chat or in person if you're in Berlin for any details or any information that you want.